take care. Always wanted a daughter. We had we had a couple of miscarriages, um, and then finally we get we get very lucky and have Eliza. I would describe Eliza as a very affectionate child, happy, very active, and a little girl that kind of keeps you on your toes. It was just great for for two and a half, three years. I would say we have the perfect, you know, just the perfect life. I didn't even go to the meeting when the diagnosis was, was received. I wasn't even at that. It was another just check it off the list to make sure that this isn't what it is. I didn't even know what, I didn't even know what the meeting was. I didn't even know there was, there was a genetics meeting happening, honestly. You know, they just said, you know, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'll just tell you like it is. She's got San Filippo syndrome. And having heard about the syndrome before through my medical training, I mean, I just, that sinking, just pit of your stomach, like, this is really bad. This is really bad. You know where it's headed. It's headed towards, towards suffering. It's headed towards pain for her. And um, as a father, you, you want to be able to be able to protect your children. If the money doesn't come in time, she'll stop speaking within the next six months. She will stop walking within the next two years, stop being able to feed herself within the next three to four years. She will develop seizures and movement disorders, experience a lot of pain and suffering, and then she'll die. The donations that come in are going to fund this clinical trial and fund a chance at life for Eliza. I mean, that is the hope we hold on to. Hope is it's a nice word, but we need action. We don't just have hope. There is something very real that exists that with enough money will happen and will happen in time for our Eliza and other kids. I mean, it is so close. We're just so close to this being done and being put in children. It's going to be hit or miss. It's not a question of, you know, if this can happen. I mean, this will happen. When a parent hears the words, your child has San Filippo syndrome, everything changes for them and for their entire family forever, quite honestly. Uh, there's, there's nothing like hearing your child has been diagnosed with a terminal disease, uh, and in addition, one that is uh, degenerative and rapidly degenerative. So you feel immediately like you're out of time for your child and you don't know where to turn. My name is Kara O'Neill. I'm Chief Science Officer at Cure San Filippo Foundation. I'm a pediatrician, but I'm also a mom to two beautiful children. San Filippo syndrome is caused by a single gene defect. And it's almost unbelievable to think that one letter misspelled in your entire genetic code can lead to such a devastating disorder. When children are born with San Filippo syndrome, they often appear um, typical and healthy like any other child. The first signs of San Filippo that come to awareness typically are some speech delay. San Filippo syndrome developmentally and how the child behaves often starts with something that looks like autism and ends with something that looks like Alzheimer's disease. So for the children early on um, there's a lot of frustration because they they start to fall behind their peers. Parents often um, will have a sense that something is different about their child, but um, it really doesn't come to the attention of medical professionals. People often don't start seeking answers until the child's around one to three years of age. And so children often end up um, having some early interventions, some early therapies, and they're diagnosed with developmental delay. San Filippo syndrome progresses over time from a child that looks very energetic, happy, healthy, to a child that begins to lose their ability to walk, to learn, 
to swallow and eat by mouth. They've developed seizures and movement disorders and eventually are bedridden and, and pass away typically in their early teens. So these things are really, really tough as a parent to just be starting to get to know your child's personality, they're talking to you, they're playing, and then they start to lose those skills. So you get a glimpse of what life might have been like for them, um, and then, then you start to grieve what, what you know will happen. Kira is very energetic and happy most of the time. She really loves to be around people and um, really likes kind of looking at and interacting with people and very often it feels like she's staring right into your soul. And she also really loves books. Um, it's been that way since she was an infant. So. It's really difficult to, you know, have not be able to help your child at all just to feel so helpless right she's crying you don't know why there's nothing you can do you don't know how to do it you don't know what you can do we've seen a lot of changes in kira since um diagnosis um she lost almost all of her words about two years ago um when she was seven and a half it's been one of the hardest things for me more recently, probably about the past six months to a year, she's um, started to experience just a lot more physical discomfort and started having um, different sources of pain, uh, some head pressure and um, issues with her muscles and bones, um, which have impacted her mobility a little bit. Um, the pain and discomfort is really difficult um, to see and that, that change has, I think for me, been the most heartbreaking. Um, you know, a lot of us know, I think most parents know when the, the child's first, right, the first time they took a step, the first time they, you know, said a word, the first word they said, or, right. I love you. I love you. I love you too. I love you. I love you. We were very fortunate to get her, last time that we heard her say I love you on film, so, and that's been really, um, you know, kind of a, a blessing that we were able to capture that, but also very um, heartbreaking at the same time, right? Um, just to never be able to hear your child kind of express herself. Children with this condition don't have time to wait. Every day, more brain cells are being damaged, they're losing more skills, and we have to act fast. Our mission here at Care San Filippo Foundation is to help find and support moving treatments forward faster. Our foundation is here as a first stopping point for families that are diagnosed with San Filippo. They usually give us a call on the phone and we have a discussion about the disease. It's a very hard thing for a family to hear and to try to understand um, what to make of it and to try to move forward. When our daughter Eliza was diagnosed, we felt compelled and we felt almost a duty to do something about it and to change the fate for children with San Filippo syndrome and for future generations. That's why we created Cure San Filippo Foundation. In our first couple of years, our foundation was able to help fund two clinical trials for gene therapy, which are now treating children. Since then, we've been able to fund many research grants around the world investigating all different types of research into the brain and into neurological diseases. Thanks to incredibly generous support from people around the world and from families of children with San Filippo jumping in the fight, we raise millions every year to fund research for treatments and for clinical trials. We are continuously looking to raise more funds to bring more treatment options to children with this disease. We will achieve our goal to stop this disease and give children back their lives, and give parents back their children, and give siblings back their playmates. It does not have to be this way. Help us change fate. Help us cure San Filippo.